Welcome to the podcast with the Face Pat and Tiz. What's up, guys? Welcome to the podcast, a show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I'm one third of the partners. It's your boy Tiz, and I am along with, as always, the other third of the partners, the incredible Padawan. I thought I would do an incredible Hulk thing. It ain't ring out right. But yeah, I'm along with <laughs> Yo, yo, yo. Facing the place. Ahead of the race. And I'm a dash a motherfucker. Yo, do you remember that? Yo, that is yes, I, I yeah, wanna I, I wanna say something. This ain't got shit to do with nothing. And tonight's vintage intro, face. Uh, I got some funny. Not even funny, but some good shit to talk about, actually. Like, some positive shit to talk about, actually. Um, but uh, thinking about facing that race and dashing the motherfucker takes me back to the Toxic Crusaders episode where we started off and I was talking about the Uma sector. And T has been on some, on some shit, man. I've been on some peaceful crusade and trying to get the folks in this sector to realize the talent that's here, because it's a lot of talented motherfuckers here, and go for a different direction with, with, with their content. Now, what I will say is this. I've been in Smoke's chat, I've been in Max's chat, I've been in Binary's chat, and I've been on Binary's panel. Went on Binary's Bro, panel this morning. I'm gonna get to that in a second. But with Smoke, and this ain't got nothing to do with nothing. This ain't no topic or nothing. This is just some update to the Toxic Crusaders episode, I addressed it. And I want to let people know that I'm not just talking this shit. Like, I really believe in this peace shit. Like, I've spent a lot of my years at war. And my brother, Pat, you know what I'm saying? Anybody we ever bring on here that know us from back in the day can attest to that. They've seen me at war. Like, my spirit has been in turmoil a, a large part of my life. So I really be looking for that peace shit. And I'm really a fan of these people that is, is my fellow creators in this sector because I see the talent that's there and I see the I see the crossover capabilities. I see the power to like really turn this into a black sector that moves some and like moves different areas of black culture because there's so many different talented perspectives in it. But um, I say that to say this, I've been in Smoke's chat. Smoke is, Smoke said he transitioned. So he said, like, I will say this. I've noticed him, like, he'll have, like, large portions of his live stream where it'll be about maybe some beef shit, but then he'll go into, like, talking about the weed shit, the, the bud strains and, the, and what they can do for the different ailments you got. And, you know what I mean? Huh. Or the real life shit where you're talking about PTSD, which we all know very well. Um, uh -huh. You know what I mean? And, or he's talking about just real man shit where like the male struggle, you know what I mean? So I, 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 I see where he's trying to transition, but I also see where people be still talk, bringing his name up. So it's almost mm -hmm. like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like I'm gonna get to it in a minute. All right. So that's smoke, but he's saying, but well, he's saying he's transitioning. And I, what I will say is that a lot of times when I get into the chat, he's going in on somebody, but when I look at the replay or when I watch the whole show, there are portions where he's just talking about real shit that actually makes sense and is good bills for black <coughs> men and black people in general. You feel me? So mm -hmm. I respect it. Um, Max, he said he's going to keep on fucking with the beef because it's bringing him views and subscribers. So he said, for him, it's strictly an algorithm thing at this point. It's no emotion. It's just, I'm going to keep on fucking with it. And as long as somebody keeps saying something about me, I'm going I'm to keep on throwing it out there and talking shit because it's going to give me my viewers. So basically what he's been doing is he'll talk for like, he'll talk shit for 30 minutes. And then like the other three hours will be whatever. The topics can range anywhere from like, physics to religion to sport. Like he's kind of like us where he'll go anywhere with it. And his panels be like that. So I can see where he's kind of can make a turn, but it's going to take binary or smoke, I think, to make the final. All right, I'm fully done. Cause I think if they stop, a lot of other people will stop. I'm going to get into that in mm -hmm. a second too. And that leads me to binary. 
Um, binary code, you know, what I will say about him is out of the other two, he supports us. And I've been a supporter of him since before he got into this kind of fuckeration of the of the situations. Um, so he's probably the one that I fuck with the most, you know what I mean? But, and that's more on like some personal, I fuck with him shit because of his support for our channel. Um, but what I will say is this, he's been part of the fuckery too, and he'll admit it. Um, but he say he's part of the troll game. And I will say this, he, he's been consistent. He's the one person in this whole thing that has said from the beginning, he's coming in as a troll. He fucks with people that he fucks with, but at the end of the day, he is a troll. He's trying to troll. He's trying to have that as a piece of what he does. He's actually studying how to do it better. So what I can respect is he consistent. I don't necessarily agree with it. I actually think it's probably going to stir up more shit than it needs to, but that's my opinion. But he, I will respect the fact that he's been consistent as fuck since day one with his shit. What I will say though is, I have seen where his content is starting to make that turn, mm -hmm. especially as he's starting to like have the people that he put on start to springboard into their own platforms. Like I can see where he's starting to kind of get into his own thing. Like he did this panel this morning, and that's what made me get on his panel this morning. This panel this morning, he had Honey Bee. You know we love Honey Bee. She a Pod Squad member. You know what I mean? Honey uh, Bee. Yeah, already. But the queen was on there preaching, bro. When I say, like, not preaching on necessarily no religious shit, but just on some, like, she's speaking elderly wisdom. And I don't mean elderly as far as she being old. I mean elderly as far as she being an elder in the community and she having wisdom of an elder. Like, she was preaching as in, as in like speaking to your soul type shit. And it ranged from believing in yourself to showing gratitude for those that do for you to cutting out the bullshit to like, like she was just going in on so many different topics that us as black people needed to hear. And when I say that type of content is the type of shit that binary started with like, when he first started, a lot of his panels would really be just deep bills on like life and like where to go in life and how the different layers of life, you know what I'm saying? So like, I feel like you got creators that are willing to make a change. We just got to hope that they can get to a point where I think if smoke or binary, if they, I think they're the key to it. I think if they both, took a break from the beef and they just stuck to their content. I think the other people in the sectors will, will follow. Cause I feel like as far as the, they give the most voice to the platforms that cause a lot of the drama or that initiated a lot of drama in the first place. And when you give platform to those other entities that initiated a lot of the turmoil in the sector, it's going to rub off on your works. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. but yeah, that's all I got to say about that. So the tips <clears throat> take of this week is, I hope these brothers cool out, especially smoking binary. I hope they really dig into their content. Cause I'm gonna I'm be honest with you. Like out of all of the panels outside of Lennon, Lennon probably got the best panel. Mm -hmm. cause, cause he's smart enough to just stick to himself. But the chat is everything. Like the family in there, the community there is everything. I, I fucks with it. But as far as outside of him, as far as people who actually do panel shows and have people up and have wide range of topics outside of Umar and manhood, I would say Smoke and Binary probably do it the best because their personalities work. You know what I'm saying? So if they can, if they can put aside their issues with all of the drama makers and just <clears throat> go to their content for like a good, like if they just took a month off, I feel like everybody else will fall off because a lot of the other platforms that really be trying to stir up the shit, mm -hmm. they would no longer have a large voice in the real community. Like a lot of the real community fuck with Smoke, Binary, Max, 
Lennon because they all started in kind of the same sector. Like they all started in, you know what I'm saying? They was all the ones we was talking about. So yeah. when these other people came in, like we don't know about them unless they started on one of these other platforms. So like if everybody kind of shut out the nonsense for a minute and shut out the noise and just get to making that fire content, shit gonna be gravy. But I hope I brothers cool that, huh? out before anyone gets hurt or ends up in a losing mm -hmm. situation. At this point, they all seem pretty entrenched in their positions though. So they all seem pretty much kind of like they have their reasons for why they are personally continuing with the with their the beef with, 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 with their responses to shit. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't do no but respect it because they got their right to do that. I can't get mad at somebody how they react to whatever. But um I'm not gonna say anything anymore to them about it. I'm gonna let it go. But I will just go ahead and say that when they make the content that's drama free, I'm gonna be there for that. And I'm gonna damn sure be watching that. And hopefully one day they realize the talents and gifts that they got and focus on that again, instead of the drama. Mm -hmm. Cause the energy that drama brings is never good. And they always end in a way that hurts our community. Cause when there's no one willing to step, step away from it, somebody always get fucked over. And it usually mm -hmm. ends in not them necessarily themselves, but the people that ride for them. Because what I see is a lot of divisiveness in people like, oh, I'm smoke gang, or I'm troll gang and cold gang, or I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Max V, you know, I'm, I'm down with Max V's. Like, this shit ain't no gangs, people. These are places for entertainment. If you fuck with it, fuck with it. And at the end of the day, ride for people for the right stuff, man. Like, support people for the right stuff so they don't start doing things to get your support because they think you fuck with the dumb shit. Like, it's no, it's no place for it. And it takes people out of their talent. So moving forward, as I get into talent. It is. Go I, ahead and speak on it, brother. I'm sorry, I I'm sorry say. but I just wanted to start the show off with that. And that ain't got nothing yeah. to do with that. I'm about to get into my real topic in just a second. So we do I, I just, um, I had thought about it and you know just looking at podcasts and more popular podcasts that you know mainstream podcasts or whatever and yeah. what I've seen them done I feel like there's a there's a a trend of podcast beef that sometimes look a little glamorous from time to time okay. and I don't know if okay. they, it, I don't know if they might be enticed by it or whatever I know everybody I'm not too far into not. beef because I'm not that person to be all in, in people's business or whatever so in, I'm wondering if maybe that's part of it or whatever and if I would that's say that's the funny if, part Pat I don't know what it mm, is like and, for me mm -hmm. like I kind of know where it started like yeah but even in knowing how it started I would say I still don't know how it started. Like I know kind of like mm. the entity that kind of brought in the doxing and the weirdo stuff and the putting out emails and text messages. And and I think I think mm. what happened was that entity came in, people either crusaded against him, which caused turmoil, or they allowed him spaces, which caused turmoil. And when both of those things happen, now it then got so deep where people are like getting in legal trouble because of this shit. And oh yeah, we don't, we don't need to go that far. I mean, if they like trolling. Right, like so when you get to that point, like, it's almost like, it's, it's why I understand like each of the people's perspectives that's evolved. Like, it's like, I, I want peace, but I can't necessarily get mad at you because like, yeah, you might not have been the initial entity that kicked everything off, but because you're a part of it now, I can understand why when this person makes a video, it makes you pissed. I understand why when this person says something, it makes you want to go back at them and explain yourself and not yeah. let a narrative write about you that may be false to you. Like, cause who knows what the truth is? Cause at the end of the day, these people are dealing with each other on a personal level. Mm -hmm. The people in the chats, like myself, we not. We not in these email conversations. We not on these text trains. We not hanging out with these people offline. We know them yeah. for their online personas and Con whatever that is. So 
whatever the shit is that's like, really causing them to beef. Well, yeah. we now if they can if they can balance the treaty down, uh, the troll treaty down into like some WWE stuff. You know what I'm saying? Where Absolutely. all right, if you y'all y'all beefing, y'all trolling or whatever, but it's like tactical beefing going to go. You know. If you if we break it down to that or whatever, I would say that would be cool if you want to continue doing the beef stuff. But when it's like, man, I don't know. I'm just again. Well, my, beef, well, my fear is, is a PTSD get hurt because of the way they train. Like, yeah, personal personal and beef, I, and and I don't and know none accidents. of these people personally. Yeah, but I do know how I would personally react to a lot of the shit that they are accusing each other of and doing to each other. That I yeah. can see, you feel me, and I and I know that like <clears throat> what I don't want is to see more black kings out here that could be using talents for good, putting themselves in a position where either they hurt somebody mm -hmm. or they get hurt defending themselves. And either way, I don't want it to happen. You feel me? Like I, I'd rather it get to a point where you can just say, you know what. We've all went too far. Let's let this shit go. Let's move on. Like, whatever was said was said. Even if we ain't gonna never agree, we leave each other alone, ignore each other, and we go to our fan bases and allow them to be peaceful in the chat so that they don't feel awkward when they go to each other's chat. Like, because that's the fucked up shit. Like, you go to somebody else's chat, you feel weird saying what's up because you've been in somebody else's chat and you don't want nobody to be like, oh, you're a traitor. Like, nigga, this ain't no fucking gang. This is YouTube, nigga. This ain't real life. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So, but yeah, anyway. That's the, um, that's the culture. That's the exactly. culture today. That's People the culture. So up on, online and, that it takes place in reality. Yep. So. Reality well, gonna hit at some point. But um, cyber gangs. Speaking Hopefully. of reality hitting, Kwame Brown. Mm. Now, Kwame Brown has been in the news lately, and you would not expect because you know ain't nobody heard from Kwame Brown in years. Um, because he stopped, he retired from basketball a, a bit ago, so you wouldn't expect to just hear his name in the news. He's not a commentator, he's not a reporter, none. But um, lately, his name has been brought up by Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson. Now on their mm -hmm. show, they comment, they had comments like he was a bust and they were talking about what Gilbert Abrinas about how he was demeaned by Jordan as a man child and he was too fast to handle the ball well. And because of that, he was a scrub and he was a trade fighter and he was, <clears throat> you know, all of this. So he, he, he heard it. And Kwame mm -hmm. Brown responded um, pretty aggressively, like, you know, if y'all want to see me, ears. you can see me, and I ain't about to be taking this shit, and et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so it led me to ask this question. When does criticism turn into hate or just being cruel? Like, where is that line? In hmm. this situation, but also in life. Like, as especially now that we're into the podcast game, and it's kind of one of our side jobs to speak on and give our opinions on things that we see in the world around us. Where does criticism go from being just criticism to being cruel or hate? <clears throat> it's a fine line for I mean, it's all depending on how someone interprets what you're really saying. And we all know perception is once it's our own reality. Um, so uh, you perceive what someone's really trying to say or perceive someone's implications behind their words. And in today's society, it's all based on tone or based on your delivery instead of based on the actuality of your true statement. So these days, that that line is getting pushed back to me where some things that shouldn't be considered to be cruel cool are considered cruel cool nowadays, where... And when we grew up, a lot of shit could be said, and it was just like, okay, we throw with the punches. That ain't cruel. We know what cruel could be. But nowadays, the slightest thing could be considered cruel when you criticize somebody on their performance or anything. So, I mean, just like when you look at um, juvenile sports and kids' sports, they don't want they want to give everyone a trophy because they believe in losers. It has to be a loser. Everyone's not a winner. They have to teach kids the difference. 
So then if you always show them like everyone's a winner, they grew up entitled and they don't, they can't process shit when really ha- when shit really happens. Um, so my thing is if we stop criticizing people to the utmost, they really won't know. But even in criticism, just to each his own, like that's somebody's opinion on another person. So how far, how serious can you take somebody else's opinion on something? Because it's just that person's opinion. So if you put too much into that person's opinion, are you giving them power over you? Mm-hmm. I feel like it's just about, to, like anytime you criticize anything, somebody's not going to feel okay about something. You know, if you're really being critical about something with no bias or whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's just really, it is about how how you say it and how you come across or whatever. Because if you come off with a disrespectful tone or whatever, and mind you, if you I'm, I'm trying to think if, if I'm Kwame, I retired, you know, I ain't paying, I ain't messing around now, nobody, I'm keeping to myself or whatever. And then out of the blue, my name just got, blown up and you know what I'm saying the airwaves or whatever whatnot that you might you might felt like you got like side swipe you know like out of the blue like yo I'm not in my own business why y'all gotta come across like that or whatever and and then when you have like a network of reporters bringing up your name and then sliding you or whatever or just just being either they slide to you or they're being critical or whatever in between you know, and, and in, to, in that banner, they have like jokes up in the in between. Because if you're doing normal barbershop shop, um, barbershop talk or whatever, and you're saying whatever out of your mouth. You know, y'all joking around, just having fun, chit chat, whatever. And then I think a lot of times or whatever, especially in podcasting or whatnot, you get into that banner and you talk how you normally talk around your homeboys and we're in the airwaves, somebody might take it a different way. But like I didn't hear too much of like the original recording of what Matt Barnes and them said. All I've been hearing or been able to get to is like the responses back and forth though. So like was there original like statement about Kwame? Did it sound disrespectful or did it just sound like hey he could have did better? <laughs> oh <laughs> before you even go there. Like, before you even go there, like, if you in the public ad, man, you sign up for any criticism that you receive. Because That's true. You, you, you sign up. The money you make should cushion all the verbal blows. I mean, retired or not, he he ain't he ain't bumming. He living, anything, he living comfortably. So the career you had must not been that bad. So regardless of what someone else said, you know you signed up for whatever you did when you went to the national Basketball Association. <laughs> it's not the Nebraska Basketball Association where you be that a man by somebody else outside Nebraska. Nebraska. You feel me? Like it ain't it, it, it ain't there. So it's national. So if anybody got something to say, okay, you take it. You know what you you know what your stats were. If someone has something to say about your stats, oh well, suck that shit up. I mean, you sign up for certain shit when you're in the public life. That's why when I'm over here, I'm, I'm, I'm as cold and as truthful and as blunt as I am about anything I'm talking about, especially myself, because no one will ever be able to say, oh, well, you know, Face did this. <laughs> oh, yeah, we know Face said that. He had said that before. Right, exactly. right, 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 right. <laughs> so, I, I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like he's kind of controlling the narrative now. Because if you notice in media, everybody's, like after, all right, before all this, everybody was like, all right, we're going to keep saying what we got to say about Kwame. And then when he actually said something about it or whatever, now media changed. They're getting all those comments from other comments, you know, from commenters that probably heard his stuff. And then they now they're, they're changing their whole aspect. Oh, yeah, he was under Michael Jordan and he was 17 years old and he was young and you know, he Jordan was talking to him harshly or whatever, and he was treated like this throughout the whole, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, all right, where was all that when y'all allowed other people to just say, no, oh, yeah, he's just trash, you know what I'm saying? But I, I, I like that, though. I kind of like that. I mean, you may disagree about how he did it, and, I mean, it probably was full pure emotion when he did it because... 
be pissed off. But right. I like the fact that he took the narrative away from mainstream media about right, himself. Right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely agree that it was probably an emotional reaction. Um, mm-hmm. But again, like I said before, you can't necessarily tell somebody how to react. So I can't mm-hmm. do nothing but respect it because it seemed like that's his authentic position and he's willing to stand on it. So I got to respect it. You know, integrity and authenticity is all I ask. So um, what I will say though is, um, as far as the, he's a butt shit. My thing is, where was all of this? What's going on? I want to know what his financial situation is, mm-hmm. et cetera. And that's being a chatty patty and a nosy posy. I know. But the reason I want to know that, but the reason I want to know that is, is because he's been called these types of things by everybody in the media since he was drafted. Since his first year when he didn't live up to the hype. Mm-hmm. People have been talking about him as a bust, as a scrub. Stephen A done clowned him many a time. Skip Bayless to clown him a many a time. Everybody on ESPN the went ahead. Like, so for you to come out right now, all of a sudden, for one, it's the social media age. So you know you can get popping if you go ahead and start coming at some controversial shit. All the smoke is a popular podcast. It ain't necessarily like number one, but it is definitely number one of the top podcasts as far as our culture that's out there, period. You know what I mean? So when you're when you're coming at the people on there, you are you know you coming in with an audience. The nigga already mm-hmm. monetizing and getting super chats and shit. So my thing is, was this a money grab, or is this like literally how you been feeling? Like what made you all of a sudden, right <coughs> now, come out? Is it authentic? Is it just you felt like you couldn't take no more? Because it's been a long time of people clowning you, and you've been eating that shit, and now all of a sudden. People calling you a scrub rub you so bad that you, oh fuck, dude, and I like, I, I don't know, and, and, and don't, kill me for saying it, whatever. I don't give a damn. But uh, at I the think, end of the day, like I feel like it's a lot of people that be chasing the drama for that guap. I, I, you know what though, Tiz, just just over of how, I, just his responses because they seem really emotional. Right. or whatever, I think it was just them two that pushed them to this point. Like, I think, I feel like, I feel like the simple fact that those two, those two, um, Matt Barnes, I forgot the other one. Steven, uh, Steven Jackson, stat. Steven Jackson. I think it's a simple fact that those two said something or whatever, and they know, and he knows them. You know what I'm saying? I thought a bum nigga said something. You know what I'm saying? So, and and the simple fact that they did that, I kind of feel like it was some on on some old, and no disrespect when I say that on some old revenge of the nerds type shit. Like, all right, oh you gonna say that on your podcast? All right, For, forget it. I'm gonna go make a podcast too, and I'm gonna say what I got to say. I and guess. then I think, and I think from there it was just like a avalanche of. I mean, I don't think. Mind you, he's not been in the public eye for a while. I, I never heard of him being like big on social media. Never except heard of for it. like a trend trending topic and pretty much. And he bored at home because he's retired. And then you hear your name off it. Um it's like, you know what? I'm tired. I did 20 years of this. I retired. So I don't have to hear 20 years of this before. I figured if I retire. I don't have to hear y'all talking trash about my name. Now y'all bringing this back up. You know yeah. what? I'm gonna just go ahead in and snap, and then I'm gonna do this 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 uh, revenge of nerds plan on y'all, and y'all not gonna expect it. And let me tell you, it works. And me, I, I got a I got a bias for the underdog. To me, you know what I'm saying? You. I can respect. I have a bias for the underdog, and when I get that feeling like the underdog is winning or whatever, I'm rooting for you pretty much. Cause I know what it's been, I know what it feels like to be doubted on, you know what I'm saying? Or 
have these full expectations at first and then you just everybody's having their critique about what you do or whatever i know that feeling of being joked on or humiliated a, a couple of times or whatever and then having that moment of clarity where you can just go straight revenge mode and just show shut people up one good time you know what i'm saying so I, I fucks with him. And, and, it, and then you said it, Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless was one of the main people that was talking junk about him. And he's also one of the main people that turned around and said, hey, uh, maybe we have been being harsh on him for the past 20 years. And it was under this and this and this. That's because when this came out and he got all the support from the commenters, they all went under, they, they went all under their social media and went at him. Right. Whatever. Right. But... <laughs> Like for real, like I now what hey. I will say is this. Um he's definitely been through a lot over the past mm -hmm. years. Um, but that kind of leads me to the second half of what I wanted to talk about. Um, what do y'all think about his beef with Charlemagne the God and the issues that Charlemagne the God raised? Because I think they're important. I mean, we, we've talked about mental health on our show before. And um, mm -hmm. Charlemagne, the guy, when he spoke on Kwame Brown, he initially came out. And um, I think, I think, I honestly think in his, yeah. my, in his mind, in his heart of hearts, his intent was to show how, like, you never know what's going on behind somebody. So you don't want to, you want to watch who you fuck with and not just be out here messing with people because like you messing with this dude, Kwame Brown, but you don't know his family history. You don't know what could be brewing under the surface and mm -hmm. you, you could spring to life because of this. Um, so Charlemagne said that Kwame's, it, Kwame's South Carolina issues, they're both from South Carolina. Um, he said that his father, Kwame's father, beat a woman with an ax handle and buried her alive. <laughs> And then he got in prison for life. And that Kwame's brothers were both convicted for murder as well. So he was using these facts to show that people should leave Kwame alone because like, yeah. you, know, you got a history of that in your family. You don't know what you can drive this man to because you messing with him. But Kwame took it as like a shot. And he kind of um, was talking shit about Charlemagne and calling him a rapist and envy and adulterer and saying that, you know, the Breakfast Club is needs to be taken off the air. And um, what are y'all thoughts on that angle of this very, think, very wild topic? Yeah. I um, think he went to the extreme or whatever because he was pissed. <laughs> Um, and I understand why he was pissed. You, not only, it's bad enough that all the, all these people are talking bad about my name for the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. Then you bring up my family issues right. that I may still have issues with. And I understand yeah. that. And, and, and Charlemagne, And that's defense. why Charlemagne apologized for it. because Exactly. Like that. Yeah. yeah. And that's what made me feel like, I, like when Charlamagne went at it, I feel like he wasn't really trying to slight him at all. He, I think he feel like- Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't I feel like it was moment. any malice intended. I, I just I, think, I think the end result was malicious. I think he had that, I think he forgot where he was for a moment. I think he, you know what I'm saying? He felt like he, he got a little too comfortable. And you know, you have that, that, you know, that back and forth talk. When you're talking about people in the street, like, yeah, you know that boy, um, this, that, and the third, and you know, he popped that nigga that one time and this. Yes, sir. Like he got a little too comfortable and he started expressing that, you know what I'm saying? Thinking, not realizing, hey, guy, nationally syndicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Might be yeah. might be took mm -hmm. it the wrong way. Exactly. Or whatever. Exactly. Or whatever. So um lesson learned. And I, I think Charlemagne received it. So yeah. See how it goes from there. Charlemagne always, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you agree with him, sometimes you like, hey man, you you showing a, you a little too Wendy Williams today. Yes, right. <laughs> right, exactly. exactly. I think you need to filter that out. Filter out the Wendy Williams, man. Yeah. <laughs> And and I think that the, the biggest takeaway from this whole situation is that like 
mental health is real. Yeah. Like we don't know what Kwame's mental health was, is, or will be by the end of this. And while everybody is sitting there being entertained by the bullshit, like mm-hmm. there's some there to his mental health and that he could be volatile about, cause when you get to being that off the hinges about any and every statement that's ever been made about you, like, and the very public view with a podcast, like all the smoke, like that shows that it's something there that's got you that heated. Mm-hmm that's in there deep and that can lead to mental health if it hasn't already. So we got to really like pass the bullshit. Like we got to think about the piece of that man. And like, I guess my biggest takeaway from the whole thing is like mental health is real. And we got to stop just celebrating and I guess glorifying the bullshit. Like just cause people beefing yeah, and something in that beef may be funny, but that don't mean we got to keep supporting it. Because the more we support yeah. it, the more that shit happens because people then start doing it for the support as opposed to, you know what I mean? So, like, we just got to chill out with that, man. Like, it make us look bad. And we, at the end of the day, I ain't seen nothing get solved by it. Like, mm-hmm. for me, like, a beef only matter if at the end of it, you solve something, like, I've had like, you know, we've been on campus before back in our young, young, young days. And you know, I, we've had beef with people and we've whooped niggas ass because they beat up a girl. You know what I mean? But they didn't beat up no girls no more. You feel me? So like a, a end goal was reached. Had we done that and then they still went back and did what they was doing and then we did it again and they still was like, at some point it's like, we beating a dead right. horse here, man. Like, like, let's move on to something that we can actually solve so at least we can get some progress. And then we can come back to this yeah, right. once we figure out a plan that actually works. Cause what we doing ain't working though. And there's no need to right. beat your head. You know what I mean? Yeah. So mental health is real and we gotta really stop supporting the fuckery. And the bullshit that, and the stupid that, shit, because like at the end of the day, it all comes down to like power dynamics and shit. So. The issue is the media bread and butter is fuckery. Yeah. That's yeah. the issue. Face what you got next on the document, man. I, uh, yeah. Man, um, Kwame Brown. All together, uh, I understand people saying maybe a mental health issue. I understand where Sean May came off when he was just getting too comfortable. Um, but as far as his reactions, I mean, like he got a right to say whatever he's saying. Mm, mm-hmm. he, he he's just not he he's not the the typical celebrity and trying to stay in good faith and and just try to go show a good side. Now nah, he, he popping back off like. Uh, y'all saying something, I'm saying something. Indeed. It is what it is. Take, take it as it is. Um, he, right, he is changing the narrative. But at the same instance, he's still giving them something to talk about by continually saying something back. So, I mean, at some point, one of the other, other people going to stop talking about him and he going to fade away and have his 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Or he going to keep on and keep on and keep on and keep feeding it and keep feeding it and keep yeah, feeding yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Until it's, and so people still don't pay no attention to it because it's like constant. Oh, here go Kwame again. Oh, okay, here go Kwame again. He made about something else. Oh, who Kwame talking about this time? Oh, okay, and there's gonna be nothing but entertainment for people instead of yeah. him expressing himself to try to make up. They're gonna be looking for the weekend. bullshit from him. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. exactly. Subscribing, subscribing to the foolery. That's what I mean. That's why I was wondering what the all. cash grab. I was like, maybe he's just trying to get some subscribers real quick, get some money, run some money up, and then like, you know. If it is a cash grab, it's a bonus. That's like bonus point to the side that he got that. Yeah. Which he's gonna get anyway because he's a bigger. Yeah. What do you got more money than I got? So hey, do what it is. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. But on some Palme. 
Are you going to your blast anything? What? You said what? Are you going? To, <laughs> are you going to your tea estate? Um. Actually, we just finished the Kwame Brown thing, and now it, it is group topic two: money, power, and sex. What controls and drives you? So whoever's topic. Oh, okay. Because I still got the copy. Oh, that's mine. But I still, I still got the copy with the the parent, the parent and blast things are common. No, I got the t- the one that so. got my John that. Uh, then your grown man laws, then aliens and UFOs. And- We're editing this part, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On my company, it is take still right, right before my group top. So we can go into the, all right, now let's talk about money, power, and sex. Ooh, this is going to be an edited ass episode. Well, God yeah. damn, we is, in, we is in real form tonight, guys. We <laughs> start from the bathroom <laughs> break shit. <laughs> I mean, we cooking tonight, guys. We cooking. Shit. So money, power, and sex. What controls and drives you? In today's society, most are driven by these three things, man. Money, power, sex, especially when it comes to me. Um, so I just want to bring a couple of things to the to the forefront and just discuss these three topics and where do you guys feel that they land on your spectrum, um, the public spectrum, and just each one individually. So first, what aspect do you say is driven or by each concept, each or each one of you guys? Um, all right, I'll jump out there first. Let Pat think about it. Um, I'll be honest, I would say none of them. Like, I'm a weirdo, dude. Like, that ain't what drive me. What drive me is personal contentment. So, if I, I guess, if I had to put a label on it, I guess I would consider that power over self. So, like, how much autonomy I have, how much, um, power I have to determine my own make steps in life is more important to me than than power over others or money or sex. Like, I feel like for one, I'm married. And so that means for me, for me and my wife both, like that, that was a contract that when we want sex, that shit on demand, like fucking uh, DVR. So like, it ain't like I got no problem there. And then as far as the money, I look at money as a tool. So like, if, am I able to do the things that make me happy? As of right now in my life, yes. Now, am I getting ready for things that I want to be able to do in the future? Yes. But today in my life, the amount of money that I make on my paycheck affords me the life that I want for today. So like, I'm content there. And then, what was it? Money, power, sex. Like, yeah, sex, money, power. Yeah, that's it. Like, I'm not really pressed for nothing. Like, I, I think in my younger days, it was probably sex, which is why I missed out on the money and the power. Like I had positions of power, but they weren't necessarily ones that I, looked for, cultivated, or wanted, they were more like, oh, we're, somebody saw you like that at one point, so you got to wear it, but it ain't necessarily what you was trying to do, if that makes sense. Okay. okay. Basically, if there's, if, are any of those elements driving me? That's pretty much your question, Base. Mm-hmm. I would say more so like having the self-awareness to control those things that would drive me pretty much like on an instinctual level like Mm -hmm. like of course i want money (laughs) of course i want lots of money so i can do whatever the hell i want of course i would want the power to do whatever the hell i want and of course i would want to have sex when i want it uh, or whatever <laughs> of, of course that's a that's a given now how is that is it logically available for me to grab the extent of these things 
and usually if I go off to the try to go after the extent of like the extreme of these elements or whatever, I'm gonna get myself in some shit. Money, <laughs> power, and sex, what you need in life. <laughs> No, now I'm gonna get myself in the shit. If you had respect in there, yeah, I could probably lean You're on that. You can sleep at night. You can sleep at night. But <laughs> I mean, shit. You, I mean, you need money. You need money as a tool, just like Tia said, or whatever. I would probably say if I was to choose oh, three oh. out of the three or whatever, rest in peace, DMX. Um, I would probably go for power. <laughs> I would probably go for power more, but power, but not power in a way of like corruption, just power over self and power over the environment I'm in. That's real. That's real. Okay. okay. That's it. Okay. Power over the environment. And yes, okay. I like so like you yes. can influence things around you, but not necessarily directly that, influence that, your path in life. Not not power that would corrupt me into something that's different than what I am. But Respect. power Respect. to in advance what I'm already at. I am. I think that's why I'm so scared of power. But we'll get to that after face get a chance. So. Man, I'm trying to be super saying Padawan. I don't know y'all about y'all, but I can be. <laughs> we'll I figure out what that means later and whatnot. Um, but in, in sex, yes, my answer is yes. That's it. Because <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. With me, of course, I'm married, so sex really can't draft me because I, I have guaranteed. So that's that. Um, if I had to choose between money and power, I had to say about the tap because um, I get up and go to work every day because I'm getting paid. I'm not doing it for free. So me knowing I'm getting my, a paycheck is driving me to go to work. The and the concept of power, um, I view it kind of differently, just like both of you did view it kind of differently. In the concept of power, um, I don't want power over people, um, more like power over self or power over the ability and the abilities of myself. You feel me? Um, the power to push myself further, the power to attain my goals without my own personal pitfalls. I mean, in that relation to power, yeah. So always trying to attain a, a higher level of that. That cool, but as far as one or the other, I would say money and power equally would drive me on a day-to-day -day basis because what I want, I have to use my power to get myself better to get it. And when I attain it, when I obtain it, the, the money from it, it's going to satisfy me too. So I view it like that. Gotcha. But um, just as far as the, the next question for, for these three these three concepts, um, what do you feel that each of these offer in a sense of happiness in terms of long lasting versus temporary pleasures? Oh, um, I think as far as the most long lasting, one could possibly be power because if wielded it correctly, it's going to generate the other two and it's going to allow you to set up the most things to perpetuate said success. Um, I feel like you can get a lot of money real quick, but like you have lottery people that hit like for tens of millions and then go broke because they didn't know how to wield the power that the money gave them. You feel me? So I think mm -hmm. that like the other two come from power. Like I think at the end of the day, the, the other two can give you power, but they also come from power. Fruit like, you, yeah, like you can you can get you can get all of them from each other, but I feel like the easiest one to get is power because you can get influence, social power, political influence and power without necessarily having the other two. You, you don't necessarily have to be rich or have a way with the ladies or the fellas or whatever you're into um, to be powerful. 
I feel like with the other two, you got to have something like to get sex, you got to have money or power. Otherwise, the opposite, like even if it's on a small level of like between you and this particular person, your power, the amount of power you have is more than them and they accept it and they roll with you and they like that. They're attracted to that. You feel me? Like, but like one of the main things women always say is they like confidence. So that comes from having some level of power, whether it's power over yourself, power over your environment, power over your planet, power over, you have power over something. So I would say power is the most vital of the three. And then it's the easiest to perpetuate long-term. The other two are fleeting. Like you can have sex, but you could also have a car accident or be riding your bike and or ride a motorcycle and fuck up and get into an accident and you never have the ability to have sex again and never have the ability to go to work again. Mm -hmm. Now your ability to generate a really extreme income and you know what I mean? Like, so there's a lot of circumstances that come with the other ones, but power, I may not be the richest motivational speaker, but I can use this accident where I can't get the other two to at least generate power where I'm influencing others to do something better with their lives or whatever the case may be. But how was the easiest to obtain and the, the easiest to sustain? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like um, out of all the three or whatever, power can is at risk with the other two. Like if you have power, but somebody has more money or whatever, they can put in a movement to take away your power. You have power and you're a sex fanatic or whatever, and it comes out pretty much. Media scandal can take away that power, pretty much. It's like, okay, you gotta have, the, if you have more, you gotta have to power. keep powers contingent upon the other two. Kind of yeah, the, your, the, the way you balance the other two off is how you have longevity with power, pretty much. Like, well, not completely how you have longevity, but it's, it's you know what I'm saying? It, it, the way you balance off that, it, it, it helps with your longevity when it comes to power, pretty much. I dig what you're saying. It's like the yin to my yang, like where I'm saying... Uh the sex and the money come from the power. You're more saying that like, once you get said power, if you can't control the sex or the money, that will take away your power. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Like you can, like you said, you can get money. It's like some of them, it's like you, you can't have sex unless you have money or power or whatever. But once you have said sex, it could take away your money and power. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, and if you, I, and depending mm -hmm. on which one of those mm -hmm. three you go after, like that does say a lot about your character. Like, I feel like those that go after sex and money, because those two things are the most passed around and the most dirty of the three, those are the three that get that make the dumbest decisions because yeah. they're they're the three that require the least amount of intellect like you can hit the lottery and be dumb as fuck and be rich mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. can you can fuck around and you be ugly and somebody else be just as ugly as you and that shit just y'all get drunk and you end up y'all both have sex <laughs> I normally wouldn't have never got with nobody, but that night y'all both got lucky and got some sex. So sexy, like, but power, like, power requires work, power requires planning, power requires determination, power requires a certain level of res resilience, power mm -hmm. requires a certain level of accountability. Not necessarily. Like, no matter what your integrity level is, and that's the other part of power that, that determines on whether you can control those other two, your integrity, but like, no matter what your integrity is, your power, you always will have to be accountable to something. So I think that like out of the three power, even though the other two can take it down, 
if you are willing to put in the work to really focus on the power, usually you will obtain the discipline necessary to sustain the other two, if that makes sense. It kind of also depends on how much privilege you got along with that power, because mm -hmm. because another because one person with the same amount of money or whatever, oh whatnot, um, maybe even the same amount of power or whatnot, they could do something fucked up, maybe some sexual, some crazy or whatever, and depending on their privilege or whatever, uh or how much said power they have through their privilege, they can probably get away with it a couple more times than the average person that just got said power and money. Indeed. So Indeed. it's, it's kind of like playing how the cards you dealt and seeing which one and, and making sure you're not addicted to one or, one or the other. Big facts. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. That part. No, that part. Just to bring something different to the table. Um, those who obtain or strive and strive and obtain one of the one or all three of these concepts versus someone who is per se born into it, who is blessed with all three of these concepts, who values it more at the end of the day, if it's taken away. I think. You know what I'm gonna say? I think the person that is born with it values it more. Because hmm. the person that worked for it, they know how to get it again. So even though they'll be devastated, they know that, okay, I know mm -hmm. this is attainable. I can do this again. The person that was born into it, they might not have developed the skills to do that again. So that might have been their only entry into that particular lifestyle and now when that is taken away from them they don't know how to get back there on their own you feel me mm -hmm. so it's more of a it's more of a it's more of a chance that a person that has worked for said whatever said goal is to keep that that it is for a person that was naturally getting it like a person that had to learn how to talk to the ladies or the fellas or the whatever you into, you feel me? Um, whoever had to, right, whoever had to learn how to actually be social and get the people that they wanted from actual being themselves and actually having being social and knowing how to navigate social situations, those people are usually going to be able to sustain that and be able to get another person or another person if shit goes wrong. Then a person who was just born with beauty and then that beauty get taken away. Like you can't take away somebody's learned skills unless you make them a vegetable where they can't remember any of their things that they've learned. But like, as long as a person got their mind a learned skill is always going to be more valuable than a natural one because like it's like in the NBA, right? If you look at the best players, the best players were those that were skilled and had natural ability because when that natural mm -hmm. ability went away, they were able to still fall back on a fadeaway or a sky hook or I can post you up or I knew how to fake you, fake you this way and lean you this way and hit the assist off this way. You know what I'm saying? Like they knew they were, they had skills to fall back on that would sustain them even when their natural gifts started to fade. And I think life is the same way. Like my ability to converse with somebody and actually sustain a conversation, that's gonna go way further than somebody who just looks good and people wanna talk to because they look good. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when we're all old and we still have our mental capacities, you haven't developed the skill that I have. So I'm gonna still be making friends. I'm gonna still be able to navigate my situation. I'm gonna still be able to set shit up. I'm gonna still be living my best life while you are struggling because you have sustained on your looks. And now when those looks have faded, you don't, you haven't built that same practice up. So I think it's definitely a case of 
when it comes to any of those three things or all of those three things or whatever it is, if you're chasing something, your ability to work hard for it is going to pay off way more than somebody who was mm-hmm. naturally given that, especially if you're re- if you really got the heart to work for it. Now, that don't apply to somebody who just want it. Like, I want to be the Casanova, but I ain't willing to actually take the time to, like, think about what women want to talk about or what's wrong. What, what, what am I doing that's turning women off? You know what I'm saying? I, that ain't going to work if I want to be the big bankroll, but I ain't willing to actually understand what the people that's making money are doing. That ain't going to work. That ain't going to work if I want power, but I'm not actually looking at and researching what power brokers are doing and then implementing those things in my life and sticking to it. Like mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like faith without works is dead. So I don't care what you're chasing. If you ain't willing to put that grind in for it, whether it be the ooh, nah, nah, do I did it. Or the, or, or, the, or, the, or the money, money, or the, or the, you know what I'm saying, the power, like, it's going to come down to your work ethic and your ability to put that grind in, you know what I mean? Like, like think about this, face. How many people growing up, right? I'm talking about even way back to middle school, you think about it was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this when I'm married, I'm gonna do that when I'm married, and think about how many of them are still married and how, and, and look at us. It, at the end of the day, who wants to get married and who stays married all comes down to who puts that work in. At the end of the day, who wants to get rich and who stays rich is who's willing to put that work in. You got a bunch of athletes out there. Some of them are now richer than they were when they played. Some of them are now broke and working jobs like us. So it's work, man. Work, 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 work. Yes. You feel? All that, all that work. All that work. You got anything to say on the top of the I think those people that were born with it or born with said power or born with said privilege or whatever, it's easier for them to be corrupted than a person that worked for it or whatever. Because if you're like used to that privilege, you're used to that power for a while and it took that away and then somebody came along dangling it back in your face again mm-hmm. or whatever, you probably go after it I pretty agree. much. I agree on that. Mm-hmm. I, also, I also think on that same line of thinking, if you're already in power and you've gotten it because of your work ethic, you know what it's like to go back to something. Mm-hmm. So because of that, or whatever it is, you know what it's like to go back to not having that said asset. So you're more likely to be protective of it and think about your moves as opposed to somebody who, well, this was just given to me, this ain't shit. It's like mm-hmm. a kid with a toy, like a kid with a toy. Like what I noticed with my son, right? He now has like, you know, he's, you know, he gets to the age where people give him money and cards and shit like that. So we don't take it from him. We let him get a bank. He got a coin thing and he got his own bank account. And he put his money in and he got his little wallet now. And he put his little dollar bills in there. And when we go to the store, he take his wallet with him. Mm-hmm. What I notice is he's more protective of them little dollar toys that he bought himself than the hundred dollar toys that he gets from Christmas from grandma or auntie or me or his mom or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah. it's because he didn't work for those other things. For those, for that dollar bill, he did some chores. He, <clears throat> he got some good grades in school. He, he pushed himself to do something. You know what I mean? And because of that, he spent his hard earned money. And when you spend what you earn, when you put your, your sweat equity into something, you cherish your more. So like you more, you more likely to take care of, like if you're a person that like, I never got girls growing up, right? So I've learned how to talk to women. And over time as a man, I've become a person that now I get a lot of women, but it's because, not necessarily because of my looks or whatever, but it's because of how I talk to them and how I can relate to them. Mm-hmm. you more likely to cherish that relationship with a woman and take care of it because you scared to go back to no Punani Larry. No uh, you feel me? 
as opposed to dude that grew up Rico Suave and he got all the girls and all of a sudden he have a car accident and his shit get fucked up and he not cute no more to the girls. Now he, he, he looking like, what the fuck do I do? How do I sustain keeping them girls? Because now the thing that I banked on is gone because I didn't develop no skills to really cultivate relationship because I didn't have to. So I think pressure make diamonds, man. It busts pipes where it make diamonds. And if you're willing to not be a pipe and you're willing to be a piece of coal and form into that diamond, you good. And that's whether you chasing pussy, whether you chasing money, or whether you chasing that good power. And I think it, it all comes back to that work ethic and that willingness to actually do the work to get it. Mm -hmm. When you earn it, it's always better. When you giving okay. it, that shit always fuck you over for me. You don't appreciate Damn shit right. as much. You feel Damn me? right. Damn right. That car, that car mom Duke gave you don't hit as hard as that first one that you paid for it and the notice in your name or that you paid for outright cash because you put in, you, you, every dollar that went into the car that you bought, you saw that sweat equity. You mm -hmm. felt, you felt that dollar. <sighs> you feel me? Somebody else shit, it don't hit the same. No, it don't. But you yeah. never do. No. Moving Money, on. power, and sex, which you need a lot. <laughs> Moving on.